It is Thursday, June 9th, 2022. This is another edition of Baseball Today presented to you by our friends over at Shady Rays. Not only the best looking sunglasses in the business, but they have a guarantee. When you break them, when you lose them, you call them, you'll get another pair. That's the way you roll, thanks to Shady Rays. That is my man, T. Plouffe, wearing the Baseball Today sweatshirt. I am Chris Rose, wearing my Washington Nationals lid. You will see why momentarily. Um, So the... I guess we're just going to keep mentioning it until they break their skid. 14 straight games for the Angels, unfortunately. They tried the whole Nickelback walk-up song deal. Like, if you were a player, would you be like, yeah, okay, I'm willing to try anything? Um, Or are you like, God, enough with the shtick. Let's just win a goddamn game. It's a little bit of both. You know, you want the street to come to an end so badly you will do anything, but it's kind of embarrassing when that something like that goes wrong. I mean, they got shut out last night while playing Nickelback. Uh, so it kind of looks dumb in hindsight, but like I said, you'll do anything. So I don't, I don't really have a problem with it. I would have chose someone different, like an Orange County band or something. How about like a, I don't know who's from Orange County, Pennywise? I, I don't know. I, I don't follow who's from where. I was surprised, though, how many Nickelback songs I do know. And I, I'm not going to I don't have a problem admitting they're fine. Everybody shits on Nickelback. I, I don't I'm not going to the that. Canadian, though. Can't we get we yes. should want California, you know, like. So what? What do you care? I don't care whether really. they're from I Canada don't. or I don't. Yeah, you shouldn't. All right. Let's uh, let's get to it. The reason I am wearing the Washington Nationals, by the way. Steven Strasburg is pitching for the first time in over a year in a major league game tonight down in Miami. Remember, he only made five starts a year ago. He had the thoracic outlet syndrome. Uh, That's been taken care of. How would you describe the former number one overall picks career? To a mere mortal baseball player like myself, I would say it's an absolute smashing success. Hmm. And there's no doubt about it. I mean, the, the amount of pressure applied on this guy was a ton. You know, from the, from the moment he was drafted until the moment of his, de- of his debut. I mean, you remember his debut. It's like, I don't remember anybody's debut. I remember Steven Strasburg's debut. So mm-hmm. there was a lot of pressure put on this guy. And he goes out there and performs. He goes out there and wins World Series MVP. He's a, what, how many time All-Star? Uh, three-time All-Star Cy Young votes, uh, top 10 votes in three different years. The guy has been a guy. Now, they give him the massive deal. So for him, obviously another smashing success. success. Chris, you know my one of my favorite games is playing Guess That Amount of Money You've Made. Yeah, that's always fun. Yeah, it was earnings. Famous, by the way, let's give it the show credit for who really started this whole thing. Dan Patrick and his crew with the Danettes really started this whole thing. They Never first... ever heard of Dan Patrick doing this, so that means oh, nothing yeah. to me. But it's true. So I just I don't want to rip something off, but it's fair. So let's credit whoa, him. Whoa, whoa, whoa. I never I didn't rip Dan Patrick off. I've never even heard him do it. And we do this all the time on talking baseball. Can you go ahead and guess? I'm saying we'll do career to date and then what is also coming. Well, I know that he still has 140 million left on his deal. Okay. Still has 140 after this year for the next mm-hmm. four years. So I'm gonna say to this point, um, I'm going to say it's uh, two, uh, 230. 215 already with 140 still to come. 355 career mm-hmm. for Strasburg when it's all said and done. So I don't know how you can look at this guy and say his career hasn't been a smashing success. So it's 12 years ago yesterday that he made his major league debut. It was a big deal. It was on MLB networking. It was against the Pittsburgh Pirates. He struck out 14 and let's remember where the Nationals were in their baseball arc. They were all the way at the bottom. Yeah. They were all the <laughs> way at the bottom, right? So they had Strasburg. They were drafting Bryce Harper, number one. I think that was to come in the next few weeks, right? Wasn't he the number one overall pick of the 2010 draft, right? You got me there. Okay, Kevin, you can look that up just to confirm. So it was all starting to come together. But um, I think if you were to ask the average baseball fan, I think they would say Strasburg's career has been a disappointment. And I don't think it's fair, but I think if you were to ask, these are two separate things. Yeah. In my eyes, he's not. But don't you think if you ask the average baseball fan because of all the injuries that that's what they would say? It, only because we put we put it on such a high pedestal. Mm-hmm. I mean, this guy, this guy has been an, an elite pitcher. 
and he's done it for quite some time. Now it just, I think the injury, this big thoracic outlet injury coming after he signs the massive deal, you know, that puts the stain on his, you know, Mm -hmm. his, um, the way we view him, but really that's by no fault of his own. The guys earned all the money. They gave it to him after he won, like I said, the World Series MVP. I, I just – there's no other way for me to look at his career other than saying it's, it's just a, a, a success. And I would dare say that he's one of the greatest number one overall picks that's a pitcher ever. Ever. I don't have the list, but I, I would tend to agree. I mean, there haven't been that many guys that have been that successful off of that list. Kevin, if you want to look up a few for us, it's, it's uh, here's the deal. The guy's p- pitched fewer than 30 innings since winning the World Series MVP. So he's been out of sight, out of mind, and the franchise is just in a bad spot right now. They're relying on a lot of young guys. They're in a really tough division where there's a lot of talent ahead of them. We don't know when they're going to get back. We're all focused next on Juan Soto. Is he going to get a 450 450- million dollar deal or are they going to have to trade him like that's all the stuff we're focused on i think it'll be nice to just watch him pitch and by the way there's no restrictor played on him tonight they said he can go as far as he wants to go (laughs) yeah because he's making 35 mil they're like you're going to go as far as you can yeah but you know how some guys get babied like it's not going to change the standings for the washington nationals no i i know and that what timing for him you know you're a free agent in your walk year you get you win the world series with your team. You win the world series MVP. You lead the league in innings thrown. I believe that year. Yeah. Yeah. 209 innings pitched, get the match. He's, he's got over 1700 career strikeouts. So, I mean, you know, if he ends up making it all the way through his contract and I hope he does, he could get to 2,500 strikeouts. I, you know, this is a tough injury to come back from. Uh, Archer's pitched pretty good with it. You know, he's kind of the, one of the only ones that's come back and have done. Okay coming back from thoracic outlet. Yeah. So I, I hope I hope the surgery has advanced and I hope the rehab is advanced where we do get to see him pitch throughout his contract and we do get to see him pitch at the level that he's capable of pitching. He's only 32 years old. 30, yeah, 32 no, years old. No, he's 33. He's about to turn 34, Just, I think. Yes. That's not that old, man. Today's game, we can continue pitching later on in our careers. And right. I hope for Strasburg's sake and the national sake that that happens. Yeah, I, I hope so. By the way, 55 career playoff innings, a 1-4-6 ERA. That ain't bad. Uh, yeah, David Price was the first pick, I think, in 07. Garrett Cole, 2011. Those guys have both had great careers. Uh, David Price obviously won a Cy Young Award. Garrett Cole hasn't quite gotten there. But yeah, those are just... fifty-five million dollars. I know. All right, Holy let's move on. Crap. Don't look now, but the world champion Atlanta Braves uh, have won seven in a row. Max Fried goes tonight as they start a four-game set at home against Pittsburgh. Uh, Braves not that far out of the wild card. Only seven back of the Mets. So are the champs still the favorite to win the National League East? They're not. Uh, you know and that's doesn't mean anything in the grand scheme of things. I don't think, I think they're a very good team. They've just dug too big of a hole and the Mets have just staved them off without, you know, some of their best players. I think the Mets are a problem. They're going to win the NL East, but I think the Braves are going to get into the playoffs and that's all that matters. Then the playoffs happen and you never know what's going to happen. So I think the Braves are in a really good position. I think they're going to have to, you know, I don't know if they're going to have to completely redo their outfield like they did last year because Acuna will be here and hopefully playing every day in center field by the time that comes around. But they they might have to make some moves. And one guy that keeps uh, getting brought up is Benintendi. He's kind of a, a, a good a good roster uh, fill for a lot of different teams. But for he makes sense for the Braves too. You know, Acuna back in center field, Benintendi in left field, uh, Ozuna can start to DH. I think that would be something they'd, uh, they'd like a lot in Atlanta. But as of now, and I don't think the rest of the season, unless something crazy happens, they're not the favorites to win the least. And if you look at fan graphs, uh, they agree with me as well. They have the Mets uh, overwhelmingly favorites to win the NL East right now. So I'll say Mets win it, Braves, you know, they, they make a wild card and then the playoffs happen and anything can happen. Well, Michael Harris, the second, has given the Atlanta Braves a nice jolt defensively in center, and he's hitting just fine right around 270, I think. Austin Riley is playing at an MVP caliber type performance. Uh, he's, this, I want to say this clearly. He's not the MVP, but he's playing at that <laughs> level, and particularly over the last few weeks. Um, even uh, even Ashland's guy, Dansby Swanson, is swinging the bat okay. 
Uh, Matt Olson is getting there. You know, they've moved the lineup around a little bit. I, this is, and also this is the first time all year I hear a little trepidation in the voice of Mets fans. Like Chris Bassett got lit up last night. He hasn't pitched great over his last several starts. The starters ERA since Scherzer went on the shelf has not been good. I know the other day we talked about how good their record has been since Scherzer went away. Well, okay. Since they got down to San Diego, they just lost a series. They're going to have a chance to rebound against struggling angels this weekend in Anaheim. So we'll see after that, you know, that the Braves and Mets play, I think one month from tomorrow. So if the lead is seven games right now, what's it going to be when they play again? We'll see. This is this was the Mets' tough month, so it, it it could be down, and the Braves definitely could win the division. I just don't think they're the favorites right now. Okay, and this is a really tough West Coast trip for the Mets. I mean, you have to go do that cross country like that. It's it's very difficult, and I think if they come out of there with a you know a five hundred record, they'll be happy with that. Okay, so you didn't answer my question. And in one month, they play in exactly a month from tomorrow. The lead is seven games right now. What will it be? Five. And don't you think they're going to be panicking a little bit in Queens? No, I don't. I don't. Really? I don't. I mean, maybe they'll be panicking as an outsider. I'm obviously not like a a super Mets fan. I enjoy watching their team. I don't live and die by their wins and losses, but (laughs) uh, I don't think they should be panicking. This this team is legit. We keep talking about they're legit. They find ways to win when they shouldn't win, and they and like that's the mark of a good ball club. And this team, like I said, is only going to get you know, exponentially better as, you know, the season wears on and people get healthy again. When is DeGrom coming back? After the All-Star break, like August, I mean, what are we doing? Yeah, I, I w- personally, I'd be shocked if it's before August. Man, <laughs> they need him back. I know. I, I miss watching him pitch. Watch, I don't know, whatever. I don't even think we've seen the best of this team yet. That's kind of crazy. And maybe we have. Maybe, I mean... I don't know, man. I don't know. They got some injuries. They avoided the IL with Alonzo and Marte, which was good news for them. We'll see if they that's, play at all this that's weekend. A big, yeah. Shoot. And answering your question now about where they're going to be, I forgot Alonzo's. He's day-to-day. Yeah, he's day-to-day. But sometimes day-to-day turns into, you know, the IL and all right. that stuff. So, By the way, in case you're curious, over the next month, the Atlanta Braves have 11 games against teams with winning records <sighs> as of right now, but the Mets only have seven. So we'll see how this all works out. All right, let's move on to uh, behind the dish. Um, More interesting move for you that Gabriel Moreno, the top prospect in the Blue Jays organization, number four prospect overall is getting called up or that Joey Bart got sent down by the San Francisco Giants. I'm going to go with Gabriel Moreno, Montoyo. Charlie Montoyo had a lot of uh, good things to say about him. And then it's kind of interesting to me, you know, this big bopping Blue Jays lineup is now probably going to carry three catchers. And like two of them are going to be filling spots uh, in the lineup, most likely a catcher in DH. You have Kirk, who's just been otherworldly behind the plate. You know, one of the best catchers in the league right now. And this guy is, you know, supposedly one of the better hitting prospects in baseball. He's going to come up and, and, and fill a need for them, too. I just think at the beginning of the season and most teams, if you thought about oh catcher and DH, you, you don't have two catchers in those spots. But here mm-hmm. the Blue Jays are going to be doing it. So I'm, I'm curious to see how, um, you know, he fits. Uh, in that lineup and then how he does, you know, in the big leagues to start, you know, we know it's a difficult transition, but um, from all accounts, this guy's a pro hitter and can do oh, it yeah. at that level. So we'll see, we'll see, man. I'm, I'm very intrigued. I'm very intrigued with that whole blue Jays roster. And especially now with the, the, the Kirk and Moreno situation, Zach Collins, by the way, they traded for him uh, in April at some point he he's up there because Danny Jansen, who's also a slugger uh, hurt himself. He's a, 10th overall pick by the White Sox. So there's a lot of pedigree there uh, with the catching situation in Toronto. They're going to have to figure something out. Right. You know, it's like quarterback. You can only play one at a time back there. I mean, I know that we can do the DH, but they've got some guys around there who need to get off their feet and be the DH. Like you need George Springer's bat in the lineup every day. I don't want him roaming the outfield every day, particularly on that turf up there. You know, Matt Chapman's a guy that he likes to play every day, but he could probably use a day out. Vlad, get him off his feet occasionally. So the whole idea of bringing up a kid that's I think 21 or 22 or whatever he is and making him at least the DH, because you don't want to bring him up here just to sit. He's got to play. He's got to play. So there's a lot of juggling that's going to have to go on and somebody's going to get moved, right? The Blue Jays are not a complete team at this point. They're a team that wants to challenge for the world series, but they're not fully buttoned up. 
So they're going to have to make some sort of move. We don't know what's going to happen health-wise with Ryu, if they're going to be able to count on him. One of these guys is going to go. Somebody's going to go. Well, it's you can't take Kirk out of the lineup. So whether he's going to be catcher or DH, I mean, I guess you can rest him every once in a while, but you want that bat in the lineup. Then, like you said, you bring up Moreno, who's a young guy. He's going to be in the lineup. He has to be. I don't see them bringing him up and not playing him. Um, from what I'm reading, Zach Collins is going to be there for a little bit at least. So they're going to have three catchers. We'll see how long that lasts. Right. But even if even if he goes down, even if Collins goes down, you still kind of want both these guys in the lineup at any given day, right? I would think so. It's interesting because if they do that, though, Chris, they kind of have to have a third catcher because if someone gets hurt, they lose the DH. Yes, you know, you have to have a third catcher. If you're going to pull this, you have to. Do it. But all I'm saying is that they have to they have to make a decision. Yeah. Maybe they're going to use the next few weeks to make a decision on who who hits the road and who brings them back a big piece. We'll see. Very quickly on Joey Bart, I'm worried about him out in San Francisco. I really am. He was the number two overall pick of the 2018 draft. That was not Farhan's draft. Farhan got there in the following after the uh, 2018 season. So he's not married to Joey Bart, but you know, we heard once Buster retired, like this is going to be his team. You know, this is, he's the guy and he started off hot. And since then he's been nothing but a swing and a miss. And I know that we can live with catchers that hit in the hundreds, you know, Yasmani Grandal is doing it. Austin hedges is doing it from the Rose rotation. These are guys that, they are relied on because of the way they handle pitching staffs and the way they play defense. When you're picked number two overall, you got to give me something more than a buck behind the dish. Have 200, 225 career plate appearances. I'm not necessarily ready to write him off just yet. And sometimes this is exactly what a guy will need. You know, go down, figure some stuff out. They want him to be the guy. They want him to be the guy, whether he's drafted by Farhan or not, whatever. Like, it's very nice to have. Do. Yeah, it's very nice to have a guy like that with that pedigree come up and, and perform. So I'm going to say this. I think it's a bump in the road for Joey Bart. At least I hope it is. I hope so, too. I'm rooting for him. It's got to be better, though. Yes. Got to be better. Yes. All right. Uh, somebody yelled at me yesterday for yelling at you about Eric uh, Alec Bohm's pronunciation mm. because you keep calling him Baum. And I always say boom, yeah. boom. Yeah, I, I pronounce I things always, wrong. Even inning, I say ending. I know. I'm with you. I'm not doing it to be a jerk. I would just, I like to be correct, which jerk. is why I hate saying one of the best pitchers in baseball's last name, because I have heard Miguel Rojas on our show call him Sandy Alcantara. And I've heard broadcasters call him Sandy Alcantara. And I, so I am massively, I'm going to admit that I am massively confused at this point. I, can I can I call him the best pitcher in the National League is the question. As of right now, uh, yeah, I think you can. And I'll, the pronunciation key on baseball reference is all contra. But I agree. People say it differently all the time. So I know. Just call him Sandy. Everyone, if you say Sandy, Sandy everybody a. knows who you're talking about, man. Uh, but obviously a, a great outing by him last night. Nine innings pitch, uh, shutty, no decision. Sorry about that, Sandy. But uh, when you watch him pitch, he is a creative player. You know, like, okay, things that I don't like when I'm in the, in the box, okay? A tall pitcher, well, he's 6'5", okay? Long limbs, well, if you ever watched him, he's got really long arms, okay? Whippy, long arms. Now, the windup is kind of, you know, easy going. I like that as a hitter. You know, you can get your timing going with that. But then he throws 100 miles an hour. He's got a 93-mile-an-hour slider, and the dude fills up the zone. So, like, you don't have a chance to go and say, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to get ahead in the count here, or I'm going to eliminate some pitches because he throws all of his pitches for strikes, okay? And then he is in the zone, Chris, but he's not in the middle of the zone. If you watched last night at all, he was just on the peripherals of it. So you're in swing mode. He makes you get into swing mode because he's filling up the box, but he's not giving you great pitches to hit. Like you're having to really make excellent swings and excellent judgment on his pitches. And when a guy has the stuff too on top of it, like I said, throwing 100 with a 93 mile slide, what are you going to do? He's filthy he is, right now, man. He's absolutely filthy. Yeah. He leads the league in innings pitched, which I love. Uh, he, also, over his last six starts, a .56 ERA. He became the first pitcher since Jake Arrieta in 2015 to go at least seven innings and allow no more than one earned run in those six starts. Unbelievable. 
the role that he's on. Wouldn't shock me if he starts the all-star game, you know, in about five weeks, we'll find out who that starter will be. Um, he's got a great shot and boy, oh boy, did the Marlins get off free on this deal. Oh right. Gosh. I mean, based on what other guys are getting paid, they're paying him three, eight this year, six, three, nine, three, then 17, 17. And then there's an option at age 31 in 2027 for 21 mil with a $2 million buyout. So they really, really did a good job getting him early. I've heard nothing but wonderful things about him. And the most interesting thing is, even though he throws 100, he's not a strikeout artist. No, he's not. That is not his thing, dude. Like, you think 100, you're like, oh, you're going to blow guys. No, that's not what happens. I think he could be if he wanted to, uh, but he enjoys going late into the games. And then I love when other managers compliment other pitchers. So, like, last night, I'm reading this article here, Dave Martinez of the Nationals. Obviously, you just saw him throw nine shutty, but he says he's the best in our league, I think. I really do. When you get that praise from other managers, that really means something. And the stat that I was referencing, the all the strikes he was throwing last night, 30 of 33 pitches through three innings were strikes. 30 <laughs> of 33. And then in the game, 84 of 105, 80% strike rate. It's the highest of anybody in 22, uh, 2022 minimum 100 pitches. The guy is, he's a nightmare for hitters. Yep. A nightmare. Yep. Flat out nightmare. That's what we should call. Is there anybody else the nightmare right now? Uh, is there what? Is there anybody? <laughs> is there anybody the nightmare? named a nightmare? Oh, my gosh. Because we can just I, start that up instead of you having to pronounce his last name. We just call uh, him a nightmare. Yeah. I, I mean, I don't let me let me see if he's got a nickname on his page. I don't I don't think he does. He does not. Oh, oh the Sandman. The Sandman. Oh, OK, that's kind of like the nightmare. Oh boy. Same thing. He puts you to sleep, everybody. Yeah, that's unreal. That's unreal. Um, all right. Well, let's see here. Interesting thing that happened in Tampa last night. Interesting thing. I, I just kind of caught it out of the corner of my eye with Randy Rosarena bringing a bat out to the field with him. It was it was in like the plastic wrap. Um, and he runs all the way out to left field, and you see him give it to a kid in a Cardinals jersey. And you're like, what? what is, is it bat day here at the trop? What do we got? Kid's got a huge smile on his face. Uh, we find out afterward from uh, Trisha Whitaker, who covers the, the Rays, that this kid named Alex gave Randy Rosarena a special ball. And it's not, I guess it's not available at the team shop. It was like a Randy Rosarena made ball. It looks great. It's really crazy looking. And so he gave him to him in between innings. And Randy's like, this is awesome. I'm going to give you a signed bat. Pretty cool. I, I love it. This is good for everybody involved. It's great for, you know, the young fan who gets rewarded for being selfless and handing the ball over. He gets a bat. I think San, or, uh, Randy even wrote him a note as well, which is really cool. I think more guys should be doing this. We're talking about Randy Arozarena. This is getting play all over the place. What a good guy he is. It's, it's, it's good for his brand. Um, I saw Justin Turner. I follow him on Instagram. He does this quite frequently. It's not him doing it, but at Dodger games, he'll have people just kind of like comment on a post and say where they're sitting. And then he right. has like a, a team go out there and they just hand out, you know, sign ball or sign Good bat. stuff. That is exactly what you got to do as a ball player. Like, you know, it's, it's so easy to do stuff like that. I mean, you're not paying for your own bats. Okay. And the balls are free to give out to whoever you want. I'd implore more guys to do this throughout the league. Great job, Randy. Great job, JT. It's just the way to do it, man. Like fans are, you know, the reason you get to do what you get to do. So yep. take care of them too. Absolutely. And we saw it too with, uh, with Taylor walls after he hit his first walk off Homer the other night, uh, the fan came down and said, Hey, I just want you to have the baseball. Like, here you go. And so walls gave him, I think it was a bat as well. And probably a few other things like this is the good stuff. I remember last 100%. year we had to talk about that horrible story in my hometown where Salvador Perez hits the record for the most homers in a single season by a catcher. And the guy takes it and runs out of the stadium before they can authenticate it and even try and trade anything. And, you know, people were telling me, 
Rose, you're wrong for blasting that guy because what if he wants to sell it and that's how he pays his rent? Like, okay. <laughs> that tells me everything I need to know about where we are in the world when people are trying to take something that could be special to Salvador Perez. And, but I'm, I'm happy to be reporting on these sorts of stories that are happening in St. Petersburg. That's yeah, I've said this on the show before. I used to throw sunflower seeds and gum to people before the game, and I still get people that like will comment on my socials or even if they see me in person, hey, you threw me like uh, kettle cooked sunflower seeds, you know, when I was 10 years old. I'm like, oh, dang, cool. And they remember it. Yeah. It's awesome, dude. That's really cool. That's very, very cool. Nice work by you, by the way. No, oh, right. hold on. Anything coming up on John Boy Media? Uh, yesterday, the, uh, Wednesday edition of baseball, t- uh, excuse me, talking baseball came out and I think it was a really good episode. Uh, we, we did the, who's going through some slumps. How do you get out of slumps? How can hitters, you know, use tech to catch up to the pitchers? Really good episode. So go check that out. And then tomorrow we have the series recap coming. What okay. you got, man? Uh, latest episode of the Rose rotation with the very large catcher of the Cincinnati Reds. Tyler Stevenson is out. Talks about what it's Stud. like to catch 103 from uh, Hunter Green. Uh, talked about what it was like to try and get through their 3-22 and 22 start. Um, and he, I will give him credit. He and his, uh, his wife, who just got married in the offseason, they have a condo in Cincinnati, and they were doing work on it the entire episode. He was, actually gave us an explanation as to why. It was um, very interesting as to, uh, like, one of the people who live there are something that happened with a beer truck. It's, it's a very odd story, but uh, yeah, <laughs> nice kid, real sweet kid, easy to root for him. And he's been, you know, smoking the ball all over the place since we did the interview on Monday. And yeah, um, he, we said yesterday, he's happy because he's really good looking, tall, yeah. really good at baseball. Got a lot going on. Yeah. Yeah. And then uh, right after we're done here, we're going to have to cut the amp app portion of the program about five minutes short today, because I'm talking to Jose Trevino of the new york okay Yankees. yeah that'll be coming out on monday and don't former forget teammate check- of mine oh it, oh down in texas yes uh don't forget to check out the chris rose trivia show which drops every day at seven o'clock there's a new episode ploofs just came out yesterday i was very impressed with your trivia knowledge thank you excellent work as always uh kevin hargrave filling in today for robbie Scirocco or uh dan rourke i don't know which one was supposed to do it but they're both you know clowning around doing something i guess for important unbelievable kev good job as always we appreciate it for t ploof i'm chris rose we will see you friday on baseball today